how is everyone doing today? So we have increased our vlogs to twice a week now and I'm really excited about it. But today's video is a little bit different. It is all about confidence. And the reason I wanted to do something like this is because I feel like it's a topic that a lot of people struggle with. It is something that I think I struggled with quite a while ago and it's something that's been a process for me. So I really wanted to kind of like help anyone out there who feels that they may struggle with confidence sometimes. It isn't something to be ashamed about, I don't think anyway. And I also think it's something that you should kind of embrace and treat it like it is a muscle in your body that you're kind of training. Because ultimately, confidence isn't something that we're born with. And as I just said, it is almost like a muscle. You need to train it to become more confident. That's the way that I look at it because that's honestly how I've dealt with my confidence issues. And trust me, I don't think that this is something that a lot of people talk about. Like you don't openly show when you're not feeling confident. You know, every time you go onto social media, you see things like how great someone is doing, how they've accomplished certain things in their life, which I think is a great thing. And I love seeing people's achievements and I love talking about my own achievements too. But my reasons are very specific for that because it isn't to show people what I've done. It's actually to help me to progress further. And I will explain all that shortly. No one really puts up when they're struggling. No one really puts up on social media that, you know what, today I'm not feeling confident. You know, we don't see that side to people. And what we see is everyone's achievements. And that can sometimes end up giving you a little bit of a complex sometimes or making you feel like you're not confident. So whatever it is that makes you feel that way, maybe it's something that you just feel like you've never really been confident or you feel like it's aggressively got worse. Whatever the reason is, I want to help kind of like just give you my little tips and hacks that I feel have worked for me and hopefully they will work for you too. Now the first tip that I want to give you is small steps. Now these are really easy things that you can do that I find has always kind of like helped me or it definitely helped me at the beginning. Let me give you an example. If you go to a coffee shop and trust me I get it, I get the cringe factor sometimes that you may feel when you hear things like this but I'm going to kind of try and make it a bit more relatable and doable kind of you know I'm that person that probably hears tips and hacks sometimes and I'm like no I'm just not going to do that it's just do you know what I mean so I totally get that you may feel that which is why I'm really going to break it down so these small steps could be little things that will in the long run help you later on don't focus on trying to become a confident person straight away don't focus on the end goal focus on very small steps because those small steps it's like building blocks. They're going to get you there eventually. If you focus on that end goal and you don't focus on the little steps that are going to help to get you there, you won't really get there, you know, because you're not focusing on what you actually need to do to help get you there in the end. Now, the small steps that I'm talking about, just as an example, say if you go to a coffee shop, you go sit down and it, there's always someone that interrupts you. There's always something that happens. And usually we don't pay attention to it because we're just like in our own world and doing our own thing. And we're just going to want to grab our coffee and do what we've got to do. If someone can catches your eye, you know, smile. It's such a little thing that we can do, but it actually makes a big difference. Little things like this, and I know they seem so minor, but I honestly cannot tell you how much of a difference it makes because when you do that very small thing, it feels so rewarding. And trust me, it will. Like it's a little thing, but you feel good about it. And when you feel good about something, you do it more. It's telling your brain, hold on, that felt really good. And you're gonna, it's almost easier to get into that habit. Habit. You keep doing it, it becomes a habit. And when it becomes a habit, you are naturally going to be friendly. It's very similar to confidence. So these very little steps, I can't sit here and tell you like every single step, but this is just a little example. You could be at a grocery store. It could be anything. You could be anywhere. And you know, there's always some kind of human interaction in these places, like the daily places that we end up going to, there is always some type of human interaction and see those little small steps as your kind of building blocks. And you're almost like practice run. Because what that is, it's taking you right on the edge of being uncomfortable, but it's not pushing you too far, you know? So it's still kind of there. It's just, you're just on the fence and it's kind of helping you to just open up a little bit more. So these little things are just things that you can do for yourself that are actually going to help you in the long run. So I really do hope that step makes sense. Take action. This tip is something that is honestly quite life-changing. Again, it goes back to breaking things down, but it's really about actually doing something. And I'm not going to say 
saying just do it because it isn't as easy as just doing it, especially when you struggle with that confidence anyway. You know, when I talk about confidence, I'm talking about confidence in everything, confidence with people, confidence with, you know, actually putting yourself out there and doing something. This makes a big difference because a lot of the time we have these things that we want to do and we end up just like pushing it away. We don't feel that we're capable of actually getting it done. So we put it aside and we're like, you know what, I'm not good at this, so I'm not going to do it. And what happens is you are kind of programming yourself to procrastinate. And the more you procrastinate, the more you're going to drop your levels of confidence. That is that is what's going to happen. So I don't personally see procrastinating as a good thing thing. If I have very short spurts of it, like as in one short spurt, that's it. I am done for quite a while then. Like I will make sure I get up because I know I have to take action. If I don't take action, I'm not going to change anything and I'm going to end up just going into my shell and you just, the confidence drops because you're not doing things. You don't feel that you're capable of getting things done. So that's another thing that I really want you guys to practice is actually taking action. So how about making a list, no matter how small these tasks tasks may be. It doesn't have to be big things, just whatever it is that you need to get done and you just don't end up doing. And make a list of all the things that you need to get done and then make a list next to it, next to each one, as to why it is good to get that done. How is that going to benefit you in any way? How are you going to feel? That's the next column. How are you going to feel if you actually complete that task? By having that little list there, what that's going to do is show you, it just kind of, it's really, it, it's such a change when you actually write it down and you look at it because you're kind of like, this seems so simple. Why am I not doing this? And then you read, you know, next to it as how that's going to make you feel if you do it. And then, you know, so on. You are more likely to read that list and feel that you are capable of doing it. Because what happens is we get so lost in our thoughts of whether we can do something or whether we can't do something that there are very simple things that you could do, like writing it down and reading it back to yourself that actually makes it a little bit more simple. It might sound silly, but it genuinely does work. Whatever your task may be that you need to get done, write it down, read it back and see, you know, shall I just get this done? Let me just do this. Taking action on these things that you keep pushing away are, it's a form of self-confidence because you're actually telling yourself, I am able to do this and I'm going to do it. And the more you keep doing that, the more likely you are to actually complete that big goal that you may have at the end. You know, like I mentioned earlier, briefly, people look at the end goal and they look at where they want to be. And sometimes that's what's telling you that you can't do it because you're looking looking at it and it's, you're looking at the goal and you're not looking at all the little things that you could get done before that, that will actually get you there. But that goal seems initially so big because you're just looking at that goal. You think, right, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do that. How am I going to be able to do that? Actually, if you ignore the goal and focus on the little steps that you need to take to get there, you will be surprised at how quickly you end up getting there. And before you know it, you've achieved that goal and you've probably progressed in, to more goals that you've got, you know, that you can achieve later on. Really, it's about taking taking action and taking action on all those little things that sometimes you push away as little as they may be because they will help you in the long run. Next up, I want you to shift your mindset. It is so easy to sit there and think, what if? You know, when you think of something that you want to achieve or you need to do something that you feel requires a lot of confidence, you kind of think, what if? What if it doesn't work? What if the person says no? What if I get rejected? You know, what if they see the insecurities in myself that I see? You know, that it could be anything. By saying that all to yourself, even if it is only in your mind, what you're doing is you're just constantly opening that window of fear further and further and further. You're like, you're just opening it wider and wider. You're kind of inviting that anxiety in because by you continuously saying that, what you're doing is basically telling your mind, I am probably going to get rejected. I am probably going to hear a no. I'm probably going to fail at this. By thinking like this and telling yourself these things, basically having these questions that pop up, right? Even though you may see them only as being questions, they're not just questions because what you're doing is those words are repeating themselves throughout your mind. You're kind of pushing away that any little bit of confidence that you had and you're letting the fear completely consume your mind. What I want you to do, the minute you start thinking negative things, is start being a bit more aware of it and telling yourself, okay, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing this thing that I should not be doing. Forget about that. Let's just push that aside. Now focus purely on the good about yourself. Think about your good skills. You know, what, what is it that you feel that you can bring to the table? And there's always something that you can bring to the table, as little as you may think it is. But like I said, little, little there, really weird. But if you, you know, as little as it is, it is something that maybe someone else doesn't have.
have. So I want you to start thinking of the good stuff, you know, think of what is it that I'm good at. And even if it means you have to make that list separately so that you have that kind of as backup ready to start thinking about, because at the same time, I do understand that sometimes you may sit there and you're like, okay, now I need to think about what's good about myself. I don't know what's good about myself. So I get that. So what I'm saying is have a, which I'm going to move on to shortly anyway, this kind of special book I'm going to ask you to create for yourself. Write down things that you know you bring to the table, whether it is a meeting or whether it is, you know, you trying to pitch yourself a presentation, whatever it is, there is something you bring to the table that no one, table that no one else has. You know, you are you, you are your own personality and you are not the next person. I hear a lot and I did mention in a previous vlog about people who, you know, say these affirmations out loud. I'm not that person. It doesn't mean you have to be. I do tell myself I know I'm, I focus on the good. I focus on what I know I'm good at. You know, I might not be good at something, but I always know that I can teach myself to be better at it. I am aware that I am not great at everything, but I also know that it is achievable. I don't have a skill. I can learn it without fail. I can learn that skill. And you have to keep telling yourself that. If you want to learn something new, you can do it. And I know this may seem like, oh, you know, it's really easy, but honestly, if you actually put it into practice, it really does work. And if you do that daily, it becomes a habit. And if it becomes a habit, then you've completely shifted your mindset for the better. Next up, it is listen. I wanna explain to you how this is connected to having more confidence or kind of building more confidence. I never used to listen to people, basically. So I used to be in a conversation and I would focus so much on trying to fill in those gaps or the silent bits that it ended up up being me talking, probably absolute rubbish because I don't know what I was saying most of the time because I was just not listening to them and I felt like I had to like fill in the gaps because I was just so scared of being in this situation of just, just awkwardness, you know? And that in turn, like stopping and actually listening helped me to build my confidence more because it actually made me think, hold on a minute, I need to listen to what they're saying in order for the conversation to actually flow. And that actually gave me more confidence. And it's really bizarre, but personally, I feel like confidence is silent. You know, when you're very loud and everything, I feel like that doesn't really show me true confidence. Confidence is something which is very quiet. You know, it's not something that you have to be so loud about. And listening is a key part of it. For example, if you have trouble thinking about like, you worry about the fact, okay, how am I going to make conversation with this person? You're going to an event, you're doing a networking event, whatever it may be. And you are concerned about how you're going to actually create conversation. Like, what am I supposed to talk about? What topics do I pick? You know, what I would do is just keep a few kind of questions in your back pocket, you know, and those questions don't have to ever change. They can stay the same. And all it is, is a conversation starter in terms of like, you know, what is it you do for a living? Nothing ridiculous. You know, you don't have to pick a movie or anything. And it kind of flows from there because what I used to do is just be so awkward and like scared of awkwardness, basically. I didn't want there to be any kind of weird weird vibe that, you know, in conversation. So I just used to focus so much on filling in those gaps that it just wasn't a smooth, fluid conversation. Whereas now what I do is actually listen to people. And ultimately that is what people want. They want you to listen. They want to be heard. If someone starts talking about themselves, the conversation can just flow because, you know, you, you will then ask another question about something they've just mentioned and it will go from there and it will just become more natural. That's another thing that I think will help you to build your confidence. It definitely helped me because I am more confident in talking to people people now. I am more confident in asking people questions about themselves now. I don't focus on, okay, I'm trying to be confident right now. That That's not what you should be focusing on. What I focus on is I want to learn more about this person and that's going to help me to have more conversation with them, you know? So focus on learning more about that person, whatever it is that you genuinely are interested in. And it could be that you end up having a lot in common. You could make a friend out of that person, or it could be someone that could help you in business, whatever it is that you're doing. Just start listening. I want you to make failure your friend. And this is something I feel not a lot of people talk about. I wish they did, because honestly, it's the one thing that actually builds your confidence. When you think of failure, you don't think of obvious stories that come to mind because we kind of live in this culture of people talking about their achievements, not really talking about failures. And that's fine because, you know, maybe that doesn't make them feel confident talking about it. So everyone's dealing with their own confidence issues. Now, most of us are taught that self-confidence comes from achievements. Now, the problem with this is that when you achieve your goals, you feel confident. But when you fail at something, your self-confidence takes a hit. And that's the problem with that, because what we're not doing is we're not really teaching people to learn from failures. 
is. What we're saying is, if you do this, if you complete this goal, if you achieve this, you're going to become more confident. But what we're not seeing is actually, it's when you fall over, it's how you get up, it's how you get back on your feet and how you then move forward. That is the ultimate kind of confidence booster, I think. As And I know it's not easy to look at it that way because when you fail at something, all you can do is look at the fact that you failed. But really, it's about what happens next. That's the ultimate thing that I want you to look at here is that you need to look at failure as if it is your friend. Let me just look at this clearly now. I failed at this. What is it that I did wrong that has led me to this? Because I need to do this again and I need to make sure that I leave out that bad step I made and I need to make sure I better myself so that I don't fail again. It really is a case of thinking, breaking up the whole process of what you just failed at and looking at what it is that you did that made you fail. Adjusting the way that you look at it, moving forward and trying again and thinking, now I'm going to do this even better. That is going to give you the ultimate boost in confidence because you have just managed to do something which so many people don't manage to do after they failed. That's what you really need to look at is that, hold on a minute, I failed, but you know what? I have to take this as an opportunity to learn from it. I have to look at it and think, right, I didn't do so well at this, but I know I can do better. I've got a chance here to either let this consume me or push those thoughts out of my mind and look at it with a clear mind and think, right, okay, what can I do to actually make this better and do it better the next time around? And if you can just shift your mindset and it goes back, all these points kind of are interlinked. If you can sh put that aside and just think, right, okay, how can I actually now move forward and learn from this? I've been given, see it as an opportunity. I've been given this opportunity to actually do better. So start looking at failure in a different way. So I'm not saying that you're not going to end up being really, you know, sad or upset about it. Obviously, you're going to have those emotions and it's kind of normal. But at the same time, I do want you to leave a bit of room just for clarity. Clear your mind and think, okay, had a bit of a cry about it if you do or I've dealt with it in my way and now I need to move that aside and I need to look at this and think, right, what, what is it that went wrong and how can I actually change this now? No one's saying don't feel those emotions, but leave a decent amount of room to be able to actually get up, dust yourself off and move on. Now, this is something that I think will really, really help you if you struggle with that confidence, building your confidence and keeping it there, you know, and you always, if your mind keeps going back to, you know, the negativity and like, you know, you just kind of get into your shell, then I think this is really going to help you. What I want you to do is keep a book for yourself empty. It's completely clean, like nothing in there, not, not, not a journal, just a clear like binder book, whatever. And that book is just your book of self-love. So what you're doing is in there, you're going to be writing qualities about yourself, thing, achievements, anything, absolutely anything that is good, you know, nothing negative, no failures, nothing like that. It's your book of self-love. But I want you to write down things like qualities about your personality, about your character, and there could be things that even people have told you about yourself that you weren't aware of. A lot of the time, we don't realize the qualities about ourselves. So there's always other people around you that will sometimes say that, you know, you're really good at this, or I've noticed you, you know, you're really good like that. Keep a note of those things. Write all these things in the book and then also write down achievements that you've made. So as little as they are or as big as they are, whatever they are, I want you to write everything positive about yourself, every achievement you've made. I believe that everyone has them and everyone has at least a handful of things that they believe are good qualities about themselves. That book is going to become your book of self-love. It's not for anyone else. It is purely for your eyes only and is for you to remind yourself of how great you are. Anytime that you feel that lack of confidence or you are going to an event or going to a networking event, whatever, and you feel like, okay, I need to just remind myself that I'm capable and I can do this and I, I'm able to actually fulfill this task or I'm able to have these conversations with these people, whatever it is, I want you to read through that book. Start filling out that book every day. Also, I want you to read a random page every day. And this book is going to help you to focus on the positive, try and push those negative thoughts away and actually start building your confidence because this is purely just a mindset. Like I said at the beginning, you're not born confident. It's like a muscle that we train and we practice every day. And with that practice, you become more and more confident. These are all my little tips that I have decided to share with you guys about how you can kind of build your confidence. I really do hope it has helped. And these are things that have worked for me. I feel like it is something that's going to help you. And if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments box below. Don't 
forget to please subscribe to my channel and like this video and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos either. We've upped the vlogs to twice a week, guys. I'm really excited. I am super excited to see where this channel goes and this whole journey of educational business, self-love, and just becoming a better version of yourself, realizing what your potential is, because I'm very, very passionate about seeing the potential in people and being able to kind of help them create the life that they want to create and kind of bring that potential out really. So this is what I'm trying to do through my videos and you know some will be a bit basic just maybe organizing my makeup room and some will be you know a bit more of kind of videos like this you know. So whatever it is I'm sure you're going to find it on this channel and I'm really excited to have you here. I guess I will see you on the next vlog.